Shambhala El Expedición Himalaya is the signature coaster at Port Aventura. This Balzer Mabillard hypercoaster is universally praised, and it is not hard to see why. This is one of the best rides in the world if you love drops and floater airtime. I fell in love with this coaster in my first visit to Port Aventura in 2017, and I was a bit nervous it would disappoint on my return trip. Thankfully, it did not. Find out why Shambhala is easily the best B&M hyper in this review. Shambhala opened in 2012 as the tallest and fastest coaster in all of Europe. The coaster would stand 249 feet, or 76 meters tall, and it would reach speeds of 83 miles per hour, or 134 kilometers per hour. Shambhala would lose both these records a few years later, and they're now held by Red Force at Port Aventura's second gate in Ferrari Land. Shambhala was designed to become the new headlining attraction for Port Aventura, and it's still the resort's most popular ride to this day. The coaster absolutely dominates the Spanish Park's skyline. Shambhala runs along the back edge of the park. Its towering hills and camelbacks can be seen from anywhere within the park, and the ride's lift goes right over Dragon Con, making that 15-story tall coaster look small. That is an impressive feat. Further, this coaster can be seen from miles away. It's the main ride you see as you approach the park. There are a few taller rides at the resort, but Shambhala is the easiest to spot between its height and sheer size. Heck, the ride is quite visible even from Tarragona over 10 miles away. Along with its immense size, I love this coaster's paint scheme. The snow white track and cyan rails is a unique color choice, and they really pop against the sky. Then the teal and gold trains look good too, soaring over those camelbacks. Another possibly unintended effect is the lighting at night. Shambhala features cameras that record guests during the ride. At night, they have the flash on. So when you watch this coaster off-ride, you can see the train twinkling over the camelbacks. And the coaster is complemented by some nice theming. The ride is placed in the China section of the park, and it was cleverly themed. Shambhala is an ancient Buddhist city at the base of the Himalayan mountains. It was a utopia where people experienced peace and harmony. The loose story for the attraction is that guests are on an expedition to reach this mythical town. The ride's towering hills are designed to look like the Himalayan mountain range, and they fit that perfectly. You can reach Shambhala either from Sesamo Aventura or the main China Plaza. Both midways towards the coaster send guests under a giant archway bearing the ride's name. You then pass all sorts of expedition gear like tents and lanterns. And the walls around the attraction are covered in snow. It's a nice touch. You don't really notice the theming on ride, but that's fine because you have a splendid view to compensate which I'll talk about later. The best visual off ride is the splashdown after the second camelback. Other B&M coasters use fins on the train to create a splashdown. Examples of this include Diamondback at Kings Island, or Griffin at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. B&M didn't want to bleed off any speed here, so instead it's a fake splashdown. Timed water jets shoot skywards as trains rocket by. A lot of guests linger by this element at all times of the day because it's a wonderful photo opportunity. You then climb a large flight of stairs to enter the queue line, which looks like an ancient temple from the outside. Unfortunately, the rest of the queue is quite frankly a miserable experience. It is a seemingly never-ending series of cramped switchbacks. You do not want to be stuck waiting through this on a busy day. Shambhala is the park's most popular coaster. It will have a wait most days. During the peak months, the ride routinely is a 45 to 60 minute wait. During these days, the coaster will often run 2 to 3 trains, making it a people eater especially because the crew can check the restraints and dispatch trains very quickly. While you may think visiting during an off-peak day would be advantageous, this can backfire. Shambhala ran just one train in my September weekday visits. You also need to watch out for the weather. If you visit on a windy day, the ride may run one train if it even opens. This is to ensure the train is fully loaded, minimizing the odds it'll valley. While I'm on the topic of weather, it is worth noting I've seen this coaster close in heavy rain. A lot of European parks will run their coasters through a monsoon if guests are willing, but Port Aventura shuts this one down until the rain lets up. So what are the best ways to avoid the crowds? 
there are a few options. One, you can visit during the winter event. With the cooler temperatures, less people visit Port Aventura for the rides, leading to some of the shortest waits for Shambhala. Second, you can head here early. Port Aventura uses staggered openings, and Shambhala typically opens a half hour after the park. I've been able to get a few quick rides in a row if I'm there when the ride opens. Three, you can get in line right before closing time. Port Aventura keeps the queue lines open right up until closing time, unlike some European parks. The line will be shorter and move faster with no express passes being admitted anymore. Four, you can use the single rider line. Very few people have used this in my visits. If Shambhala is running multiple trains, you shouldn't have to wait more than 10 to 15 minutes. If Shambhala is on one train, this line can move painstakingly slow though. 5. You can purchase the Express Skip the Line Pass. This not only lets you bypass the wait for this coaster, but it gives you an advantage when it comes to seat selection. Like many of Port Aventura's coasters, Shambhala has first come seating. Express Pass users are typically admitted into the station first. The gold level Express Passes are allowed one front row ride in Shambhala. If they already use their front row ride, they are directed to fill any other row. Most people fill the train from the front, but the best seats on Shambhala by far are the back car. That is where you get the strongest and most plentiful airtime. If the seat you want is taken, you may be able to wait off to the side for the next train, but you can't wait in the station, and they don't always let you do this. It depends on the employee. Each train is comprised of 8 cars. Each car can accommodate 4 riders, so the train seat a max of 32 riders per cycle. Shambhala was the final B&M Hyper to use the staggered V-shaped seating. The front two riders per car sit shoulder to shoulder. The back two riders are set behind those seats off to the side. This puts more space between the seats in front of you. It also significantly lengthens the train, which is why I think Shambhala's drops are more potent in the back rows. The restraints look similar to your usual B&M Hyper. You have a clamshell harness that comfortably rests above your thighs. The one thing to note with Shambhala is that it requires an extra click than most other B&M Hypers. Candemonium at Hershey Park is the only other one I know of that's extra restrictive like this. This can make the ride very challenging for riders with thicker thighs. Further complicating matters is that there's sometimes an employee by the main entrance. They will direct larger guests towards a test seat. If they fail to get the green light, you may not be admitted into the queue line at all. There was someone on my train who had just ridden Shambhala. They needed a firm push from the platform attendants, but they were able to ride. When they tried to re-ride, the employee at the entrance directed them to the test seat. They said they had just ridden, but they were still told to sit there. They could not get the green light in the test seat. They tried arguing they had just ridden the coaster, but the employee would not let them into the queue line. I'm not sure if the platform attendants push harder, or if the test seat is more restrictive, but just be careful if you have thicker thighs. Once dispatched, you turn to the right and ascend the massive lift hill. And let's talk about one of the best aspects of Shambhala, the view. The sight lines on this coaster are stunning. To the right, you have the entire amusement park. To the left, you have a breathtaking view of the Mediterranean Sea. That is especially true because Port Aventura is located atop a hill, and you're looking down at the water. Then in the distance, you see these gorgeous mountains, and these visuals are not just on the lift hill. You can enjoy them for the entire ride. It is surreal getting powerful airtime and getting your experience of view fit for a postcard simultaneously. Once atop the lift, you are thrown over the 256 foot or 78 meter tall drop, and this is one of the best drops in the world. You have all that height, so the drop lasts forever. The drop is very steep, as it's angled at 77 degrees at its max. So if you're in the back, you get some incredible floater airtime. It is very strong and sustained floater airtime. And more impressively, the drop gives that stomach dropping sensation. I don't usually get that feeling on coasters, just drop towers. But Shambhala's drop manages to give that sensation. I think it's a combination of the long trains and the drop length. Then the drop culminates by plunging into an underground tunnel. It is a great near miss and then you're pummeled with positive G's. I start to gray out here and don't regain my vision until halfway up the next hill. 
and that next hill is a giant camelback. This is the most sustained airtime moment on the ride if you're up front. You get good floater going over the top. Then you stay weakly levitated out of your seat for the entire descent. You're out of your seat for a good 4-5 to five seconds straight. In the back, the airtime kicks in later, but it is stronger floater airtime, and you get a pinch of that stomach drop sensation too. Next is Shambhala's famous ampersand turnaround. The twist upwards has great positives, which can cause another gray out. You get a reprieve of forces at the apex as you momentarily slow down, but then you twist downwards, rebuilding all of that speed, and the positive G's build up again too. This is easily one of B&M's best turnarounds ever, and it's a shame they haven't used it more. You then fly over a speed hill. This diminutive hill offers the most forceful airtime in the ride. If you experience the speed hills on Mako, Candemonium, or Orion, this rides similarly. You don't slow down one bit while getting lots of flagector airtime. It is worth noting there is a trim on this hill, but I personally have never seen it kick in. That's not too surprising because I've only visited this park in the cooler months, so let me know if it does kick in in the summer months. You then zoom over another giant camelback. This hill is still massive. It seems like your eye level with Dragon Con's first drop. Those up front get several seconds of nice floater airtime. Those in back experience somewhat stronger floater airtime on the descent. And like the first two drops, I also got that butterfly sensation in my stomach. Next is that faux splashdown. The proximity of the water jets enhance the already sustained speed. And if you're in the back wing seats, be prepared for some of the water to splash you. You then have back-to-back -back bunny hills. The first gives good floater air time for all. The second gives great floater air time for everyone. And the drop off the second is another one that gives that stomach drop sensation in the back. I still cannot believe how regularly Shambhala produces this sensation. You then rise upwards into a mid-course break run. You subtly bank left at the top, so those up front get some nice floater air time, plus decent laterals. Those in back slow down too much to get the laterals, but they'll still get some weak floater. You then cruise through the break run without slowing down one bit. Now I called this a mid-course, but it's not really in the middle of the ride. It's more like four-fifths of the way through the ride. You then twist 180 degrees down to the ground. The drop isn't too steep, but it applies some good positive G's at the bottom. It really is unexpected. Next is the final bunny hill. The airtime isn't as substantial as what you get in the first half, but you still get some decent floater throughout the train. You then hop into the final break run. You get a quick pop of airtime up front, and a little bit of lift in the back. You then smoothly come to a stop. 99.9% .9 of the time, you will return to the station. But if you get the last ride of the night on Shambhala on a cooler day, and the coaster is running multiple trains, you may be evacuated from the brake run. The park doesn't like to send empty trains and risk a valley in these conditions, so they'll just unlock your restraint and have you walk back to the station. This happened to me in my most recent visit, and I know other people have had it happen to them too. In terms of pacing, Shambhala reigns supreme among the B&M hypers. This model can have three pitfalls, slowdowns atop the camelbacks, lackluster turnarounds, and too much braking. Shambhala has none of those issues. Shambhala carries plenty of speed through the layout. Every single hill delivers airtime in droves, and those in the first half deliver some of the best floater airtime on the planet. You are not slowed down by the trim break, nor the mid-course. And the turnaround is a genuinely fun and forceful element. This coaster does not have any major dead spots, which is impressive for a ride as long as this. Shambhala has 5,131 feet or 1,564 meters of track. So what would I rate Shambhala? I would easily give this coaster a perfect 10 out of 10. This is one of the most addictive coasters in the world. It is inherently rewritable. You have that super smooth ride, great pacing, and oodles of sustained floater airtime. B&M hypers always excel in the latter, but Shambhala goes above and beyond. And then a few of the drops give that stomach drop sensation in the back car, which isn't something I get to experience too often on a coaster nowadays, so I really revel it when it happens. Last but not least, 
you have those world-class visuals of the water and mountains as you're navigating the layout. It makes the ride feel like a dream. All these factors make Shambhala my second favorite B&M, only behind Fury 325, but it is darn close for me. So those are my thoughts on Shambhala at Port Aventura. What are your thoughts on this coaster? Do you think it's the best B&M hyper out there? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.